It is the Matt Barry Show here on the ESPN College Football YouTube channel. Coming off a massive week two, we kind of come down a little bit in week three as we bring in our guy each and every week to preview the week. It is a Matt and Mullen Tuesday or Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, whenever you're watching. <laughs> so Matt and Mullen here with you. Uh, Coach, first of all, let me apologize for my backdrop. I typically take pride in the uh, Matt Barry YouTube Show Studios. I am here in Bristol at ESPN. Uh, I got a busy day today, so I now have the the lamest backdrop ever. Uh, every once in a while, and so uh, I mean, the, keep, keeping everybody entertained, getting us the latest injury news on Aaron Rodgers. The uh, lighting is awful in here. <laughs> right, you know, like I've got all the good stuff at, at the home. I'm studio. trying to figure what's right behind your head. Is that like a clock, or is that clock. art, or what is yeah, that? That's a clock. There we go. And then just in this room in general, we have just TVs and this. Anyway, it's a nice listening room here <laughs> in Bristol, but it's not going to stop us from doing our thing to get you set for week three of the college football season. I said, look, last week you knew you had Alabama, Texas. We kind of had to get to know who's who and what's what in week two. Uh, this week we come down a little bit, but there's still some games of note. One that you know very well, Florida and Tennessee in a game that back in the day used to decide the SEC East. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I mean, and it still is. Listen, it, it's still going to be a huge game. Uh, obviously, for Tennessee uh, to continue on the road that they were on last year, where they are um, inches away from competing for either the SEC East or in the college football playoffs. They were right there, if you remember, going all the way to the end of the season. This is a huge game to go on the road and play at Florida. Now, Florida might not be where they were years ago, uh, but they're still Florida. They're still going to be a good team. It's still the swamp on a Saturday night and a huge game. Now, for Florida on the flip end in the Billy Napier era, they're still waiting, I think, for that first marquee win. Uh, this would certainly be it for them uh, and, you know, would, would be a great a great challenge for them. Uh, you know, it, it is. I think Tennessee with 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 uh, Joe Milton, first road test, uh, we we get to see really what Tennessee is all about in this game. We, we've seen Utah, uh, the Utah-Florida game. We've seen Florida in the Utah game when they went out there, uh, you know, and didn't look as sharp offensively, played some pretty good defense. And can they come up and play a good defensive game, put it together, keep it a close game and let the fans in the swamp kind of take the game over and give them the edge will be the key. Yeah, for me, I'm, I'm very interested in Joe Milton. Uh, Cause I said at the beginning of the season, I've gone on record here on the YouTube show that if he harnesses the natural ability, he could be a guy we're talking about mid-October and in November as a Heisman Trophy candidate because he has everything you need to be a, a, a great quarterback. Whether or not he uses that and has learned from his past remains to be seen. So, Coach, for me, this is the first time put him in the swamp, put him in as hostile environment as you can because this is a good opportunity to learn with Tennessee as their quarterback for the rest of the season. Absolutely. Absolutely. It is. And that's the, the biggest challenge you have in the SEC road games in the SEC. The what does in the swamps, one of the hardest environments you're going to play in, but that's going to happen week in week out in the Southeastern conference and the crowd noise, all the things that go on that affect you. It, it you know, you might just say it's just the noise and it's hard to communicate. It's not that. I mean, it's going to feel like 90,000 people are falling on top of you. It, it is a, it's a, it's a very intimidating feeling and intimidating. I mean, the swamp is certainly an, and as momentum starts to slip at any time, it swirls out of control when the crowd gets into a frenzy. Yeah. And, you know, I think I've got this number right, but three and six SEC in the non-conference matchups the first two weeks of the season. And so now you're looking at it. I mean, this thing, other than Georgia, speaking from an East perspective, I mean, it's all wide open. Kentucky's in this thing. Uh, Florida's in this thing. Tennessee. I mean, it's it's wide open, Coach, because it doesn't and, – and, and even Georgia, to a certain extent, hasn't looked amazing. And, and so – this is a really good start to the season for a couple of these teams that when you kind of look at the SEC big picture, 
this thing isn't as foregone of a conclusion as we thought it was. Yeah, I, you know, I mean, listen, Georgia's got some changes. Now, granted, they still have, you know, you know what travels is a great defense and that'll stick with you for a very, very long team time. And the one thing that Georgia has is that great defense. Up for a lot of little issues, but the East, unlike the West, the East hasn't been challenged and Georgia, you know, Georgia, it, Took the, the the route. They're they're not being challenged the entire season. Um, you know, out of conference, uh, they have conference schedule. Uh, their crossover games. You know, Auburn's down. Old Miss could be a game uh, for them. So they have the East teams now. The question is, who is that team? I don't know. That you know, Tennessee. We haven't seen uh, the you know Kentucky. I don't think has looked great. They haven't. Uh, in their first couple of games, South Carolina obviously did, did not look good against North Carolina. I, I, the SEC as a whole right now uh, has a non-conference image issue uh, so far this season, I think. And now the benefit they have is they're all marquee names uh, with great teams. And when they get in conference, the margin for error, the margin within the conference, it tends to be smaller than out than a lot of other conferences. And so they're going to have opportunities playing against each other to make up the ground and, and maybe give credible wins within the conference for, for whoever is on the back end of this league. Yeah, and and this is a good start at it this weekend in terms of trying to identify that second team. I think Tennessee, just because of the offense, could probably hang with Georgia a little bit until we know more about Carson Beck. Um, but I'll, let me put it this way. How big... How important, how crucial, use any way you want to describe it, is this for Billy Napier this week? Well, I, you know, I don't I don't think he hasn't won a rivalry game yet. And I think that is a huge deal of, you know, I mean, at Florida, you know, there's some people that have the, the one true bitter rival. At Florida, there's really, there's the three games that are rivals. There's Florida State, there's Tennessee, and there's Georgia. And, you know, I, he hasn't gotten a win in one of those games. And that for the for the fan base, um, obviously, they want to win. You want to win championships. But the rivalry games, you get wins in those. They just it just means a little bit more for everybody, as everything in the SEC does. But as the as the rivalry games just means more. This is always a big game. I, I you know, in all my years at Florida, both as, a, as an assistant and a head coach, the Tennessee game was always such a huge game. And, uh, you know, and, and it kind of kicks the season, the conference season off. And so th this would be a, a big, big win for Billy Napier in the direction the program's headed. Uh, a loss, you know, I mean, he, he could be looking at 0-6 at after two years against his rivals. And, and that's not how Florida fans want to see things. Give me a prediction. You know, I'm going. I'm going Tennessee. I'm still. I'm still on the the Tennessee bandwagon until they get me off. With uh, Josh Heupel, the offense has looked good. Joe Milton can make all the plays, and I trust Josh Heupel honestly to put him in positions to succeed. I, I, I we've seen little things that that you know you you pause on him at all times. Not not certainly not his talent, but I think Josh Heupel does a good job of of kind of keeping the where the offense is going and keeping it in his wheelhouse and easy for him. And I think they're improved defensively to, to shut Florida down. I think, I think Utah showed it. If, if you can stop the run game at Florida and make them one dimensional, you know, really shut the run game down. They, they're not going to be very good on offense. And it just so happens this week in the SEC, some conference games, really, like I said, on a, on a slate that leaves a lot to be desired. You've got LSU, Mississippi state, I don't know. Don't, Mississippi State. don't sleep on that one now, because yeah. that when you look at the SEC this week, I'm, I'm looking at the games. That's the one, you know, all of a sudden, you know, I mean, you're, you miss LSU is going into Starkville and I mean, the cowbells will be ringing and it'll be loud. It'll be a hostile environment. Uh, it'll be a, a great game. Uh, Mississippi State's 2-0. You know, right now, and LSU's kind of already been backed into a corner. So um, it, it's that to me is such an interesting matchup in the league uh, because you know, I mean, Mississippi State wants to show that that they're here with with Zach Arnett in his first year that they're they're a legit team and they're they're still headed in the in the direction to 
uh, be a great team and continue on, on the run that they've started this season. Uh, they found a way to win last week against Arizona, but LSU kind of, this is it now. This is it yeah. for them. You know I mean? It, it, they, they can't afford to go down again. Yeah, you mentioned it. First, Mississippi State got incredibly fortunate last week against Arizona at home. Uh, it, it needed a replay in overtime to get the win, and it was a good effort by Arizona. Mississippi State's defense looked really, really good. Turned the ball over a lot to Mississippi State's defense, which is what they're going to hang their hat on under Zach Arnett, former defensive coordinator, taking over uh, from Mike Leach. But when you look at it now, and we had made this a topic of conversation on, on college football final and throughout the day Saturday, like if you're one of these big time SEC West schools, LSU, Alabama, AM, like your house money, it's gone. It Going is. into week three, you've lost every window to stub your toe because you lost too early. Absolutely. I give LSU the, the nice thing for them. It is a noon kickoff. We'll have that one at noon on ESPN. But it, uh, it is. So, I mean, you know, I mean, you know, when you're that's 11 a.m. local kick, everybody hasn't had the full day to tailgate in the SEC in Starkville. So um, but I, I, it is like you've said, all three of those teams, whoever is coming out of the West needs to win out and and win the the SEC championship game. You know, I, I think right right now you're looking at all those contenders I, I the you know, the, the worst thing that, that Greg Sankey's looking at is that we, we have a two loss West team that has a non-conference loss against a marquee program. That's going to be in the discussion winning the sec championship. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you re- could it knock them all out? <laughs> Eddie the right. And we, we haven't been on these, we haven't been in these waters recently with the sec, but I don't think any of us had LSU, AM and Alabama all losing by week three. No. And, you know, and, and out of so, conference. Yeah. And, and, you know, I mean, they all got to play each other. So, I mean, two of the three are at least going to have two losses at a minimum. And, and that's nothing. That's not stubbing your toe. I mean, that's nobody else coming up to get you. That's, that's nobody in the East coming up to get you. That's no Old Miss or Mississippi State or, you know, Arkansas. The one thing about the SEC West that there's no weak spot in the West that that's the one thing that makes the West tough. And these guys have like, as you've said, they have that loss on the, on the record. And I don't, you know, I mean, who's the weak team in the West? I mean, you, you want to play Arkansas with that two headed running attack. You want to go play the lane train. You, you're right. not jump. You're not jumping up and down for that game. Even Hugh freeze in year one's going to get you. Hugh freeze is always going to sneak up and get somebody right. And, you know, I mean, I mean, that's always been the track record for him. And then, you know, and Mississippi State, uh, you know, I mean, you want the you want to show up at a must win game with the cowbells going on a Saturday. That That's that's not easy. And so I think that's what's kind of really interesting so far with the West. So we've got those two games coming up, both of them, by the way, seven Eastern ESPN, Tennessee, Florida, that noon Eastern LSU, uh, Mississippi State. Now, full disclosure, we're taping this. 10, 15 a.m. on Tuesday. So there could be some news coming out after Nick Saban's press conference. But what I'm curious with, the game against South Florida, roll the ball out, beat them handily. I believe at some point Alabama is going to start moving in another quarterback with Jalen Milrow. And I think that's probably going to be this week. What do you think is going to happen? I do. I I don't know that. I don't think I don't think he makes a change at starter. Now he could, Melrow, but I think there's going to be a plan to roll guys in from this offense, and he's just too dynamic a player with the. Uh, however, last week it got showed in in a case when you have to throw the football, he's not going to be the guy. You know, I he listen and don't take away from his throwing ability because he made some great throws in that game. But his play action, run, run, get an advantageous look, max protect, stand in the pocket, and drop a deep ball in down the field. His game is not short to mid-range, drop back, let him throw the ball around the yard. That's not his. I think they need to find somebody that can do that. 
Yeah, and, and th- look, Tyler Buckner, we know, came over from Notre Dame. Ty Simpson is another young player. But, yeah, th- look, if you, they just had to have someone for week two, right? And Jalen did enough. Milro did enough against Middle Tennessee State for them to say, okay, we got the best athlete on the field. We can see if this works. But I think for Alabama now to win out and stay, keep their playoff hopes alive, I think you're going to have to see someone different 60% of the time, 65% of the time, and then maybe Milrow 40 to 35% of the time. Yeah, I, I said that in the preseason. I always thought that they would be a two-quarterback team this year. Um, that was my thought coming into the year. And I, I still think they're going to get to that at some point. They could realize, hey, this is what's best for the team. We need to do this. Finally, as we look at the grid, I don't know if you've got it in front of you. Is there anything on this Saturday slate other than the three games that we talked about where someone needs to be on lookout alert? You just can't sleep. I've got one in mind, but I'm curious what you think. You know, I mean, well, it's some interesting games. Kansas State, Missouri to me is a really interesting game. That 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 is. And 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 here's why. You know, Kansas State. Defending Big 12 champ, they're ranked. We've talked, we talked about them on final. They a bunch. They they kind of are out there that you know you wouldn't know that they're number 15 in the country right now. And they are, they're a good football team. They had a lot of guys come back from a team that won the conference title last year, going on the road to Missouri, who uh, even though still being two and oh is you know, maybe not looked as sharp, but it certainly thinks that maybe they could be a contender in the East this year. And that's one to me that's, that is, it's, it's got intrigue written all over it uh, on that game. Yeah. Yeah. Look, there's last year we saw it this year. I believe we're going to see it again where every Saturday there's going to be a, what the hell just happened. <laughs> and then- this one has that written all over it. Like, wait, Real? Wow. Okay. Now, and I'll tell you this big picture coach, big 12 cannot have Kansas state lose because the big 12 right now is Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas state. Those are the only three teams ranked. And if Kansas state goes down, now you only have Oklahoma, Texas, which to me says Texas has to be undefeated to make the playoff. Cause you can't come out of a league with no ranked teams and have a, have a blemish on you. You just can't have it. Yeah, the only thing that would save Texas if they lose it would be in the regular season to a team and if, like say it's Oklahoma and then beat them in the championship you game where they have that, that would be the benefit for them. But there are when you have these weekends where it's not just the marquee games. Hey, there's North Carolina, Minnesota. You you always know, you know, I don't Minnesota, I'm not putting up there as a great team this year. Uh they snuck by beating Nebraska. But you know what? They run the ball. They're physical. They, they you know, they, they're always going to sit around. I think that could be a sneaky game. The other one this week to me, Washington, Michigan State. Okay. Washington traveling to Michigan State. A lot going on around the Michigan State program right now. But a lot of times that results in a rallying cry on the team. It's a, it's a long flight for Washington to get over, uh, to go play the game. Um, you know, uh, they've kind of gone with ease that we could just throw the ball on anybody and just score at will. Uh, I think those are, th- this is the type of week where those games sneak up on you. Yeah. And I, th- there's a couple of them that sit out there. That'll be interesting. Yeah. But by Saturday night, I would bet when we're going on college football final, uh, there will be a game or two. They were like, see, told you. So you got to be careful. I can almost 100% with 100% certainty tell you that it's not going to be Colorado State upsetting Colorado. Ain't going to happen. Right? Yeah. Do you have your believe cup out today? We need to believe right there. Yeah. There's the, the the believe, right? I mean, every he's gotten everyone to believe. And I think one of the things that, you know, and, and all right, they are the ultimate example this year, Colorado, of why would you have a preseason poll? Now, I know it's great because to have exciting week one or week two matchups against ranked teams. But why would you have a preseason poll? Because you don't know anything about teams coming into the season. I What you knew is all of these transfers coming in, I know they were unbelievable, great high school recruits, but a lot of them, they played at Jackson State. How's that going to translate? 
How's all of the new faces in the program coming in? How's the the program, the the coaching staff going to gel and be organized? There's so many unanswered questions around Colorado coming into the season. And you go watch them play the first two weeks of the season. Boy, I, I tell you what, they can score with anybody. I think they're they got a, have a great offense. They have great skill players, and they, and Shador Sanders has wowed me as a quarterback. Yeah, Mel Kuyper's got him now as the a third, the third quarterback on his board, and said that if he stays next year, he'd be the number one overall pick going away. I think that I watching him throw the ball. I think that's easy to say. I and and it's not just oh, did you see that it, it's. All of the throws in the pocket, out of the pocket, under pressure, not under pressure, changing arm angles, deep shots, short throws. He is really, and and then the confidence in running that offense. Defensively, they have guys that can make plays on the defensive side of the ball. Their one issue, and and I will say this, it's going to make them exciting throughout the year is, I I think they still struggle stopping the the run game. They, They gave up over 200 yards last week to Nebraska. That's going to be one that can get them. But here's the thing: what you have to remember when you Pac-12 football is not always one on the line of scrimmage; it's one with athletes. I mean, it's exciting. Listen, they're going to go. They go play Washington. I mean, a pinball machine. It's going to light up. They're both teams. All they want to do is throw. Colorado can play that game. They go. He's not going to roll out there with this power running. Let's go con- dominate the line of scrimmage, control the tempo of the game. So it's going to be really interesting as the year goes on. Oregon, the same way. I mean, they're playing spread, explosive, high-scoring offense. That That's right down their alley. Can uh, I, yeah, I can't, I can't wait. This is, look, this is an appetizer because next week you have Colorado, Oregon, which we'll get into extensively. But this week you've been primed for an under the radar weekend of college football. But again, we say it all the time. It's the under the radar weekends where something pops up that happens that none of us expect. And that's why we love the sport. So you're all set week three of the college football season. Don't forget it starts Thursday night, Matt Mullen, Harry Lyles in Memphis for Navy Memphis. Can't wait to get this thing started. Coach looking forward to see you there. It'll be awesome. We're going to have a great time. Tune in Thursday night. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.